Hello and welcome back to Sorcery. I have rewound time to the beginning of the hole and we're going to try this again. So give me money, feel around, curse them, take the tinderbox, light the torch, continue. All right, so last time I went lots of rights, so this time we'll go left. Oh, right. Stones, we had two stones on top of each other. Last time we went right, so this time we'll go left. Um, and left again, because these are the pair of stacked stones. So we'll go left again. The going is suddenly more difficult, and you realize that the tunnel is climbing at quite a sharp gradient. Little stones rattle and roll away downward into the dark. At the highest point of the passage you are following, finishes at another fork. As you enter, two stones roll away down the slope. Go right. I mean left. You go left. The cave walls crush in close as though the rock is squeezing you to death. Your shoulders rub against the walls. You feel certain you can go no forward. The path you are creeping through forks again. Another pair of stones are stacked in the corner. I wonder if all these stones mean go left. You follow the passageway when you hear an echo of whimpering coming up the corridor. Your torch light falls across a frail shape. Hiding in the shadows is the young Sven girl stacking stones into hundreds of little towers. Look with traps. You run the torch around the walls of the cavern. No switches or triggers that you can see. The girl watches you with silent fear. And then the torch light falls on a deep scratch in the rock. A claw mark. Suddenly there is a loud roaring from the mouth of this short cavern. The walls begin to shake and crumble. Sven stone towers topple and shatter. To one side, a gap in the rubble begins to open, letting through a mean shaft of light. But before you can head for it, the roaring sound is joined by a scream from the Sven girl. You turn slowly and peer into the gloom back along the tunnel. Is something moving? Something coming closer? Perhaps the roaring is the wind crushing through the tunnels. Something is coming. Oh dear. That does not look good. You hear the scrabbling sound of rock claws on rock and exit from the tunnel is blocked by a dark looming shape. A manticore. Huge and terrible. It stands between you and the light and the howls in bloody rage. Look at the creature. Fight the creature. I can't use magic. I've got the fairy on my shoulder. I want to get rid of this fairy. Manticore is a foul hybrid created by the evil sorcerers of old and steeped in bitter self-hatred. It has a lion's body and the tail of a scorpion, but its face is that of an old man and its thoughts are cruel and resentful. As it sees you, it rears back, flapping two enormous wings on its back. I can't use magic because a stupid fairy. Oh dear. He's got a lot of attack power. Let's just defend first. There we go. You just used all your power. I don't want to use all of mine. I don't even know how this works. Oh my god. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to be able to do this. And two, it'll try that, and then it should go to smaller attacks. I'm beginning to see the pattern. I may be able to do this. That's going to be a big one. Five, and then it can't do a big one again. But it should be able to do like a four now or something, right? Four, eight. Yeah. It's gonna do a... Yeah. Alright, I can beat this. I can beat him. We defend against his powerful one. Defend against his five. And then he just does something really small. Then he does something about a four. Nope, another small one. 
And that's another high. All right. Defend number one. Defend number two. What if I attack on the second one? <laughs> and then attack on the third. I, I, if I defend, I'm gonna die. If I fight, I'm gonna die. There we go. Yeah! I lived though! 12 lost, shameful. I'm fucking alive. You test the creature. Quick as a flash, you slash at him. Your sword blade seems to be almost possessed. It finds it way past the claws and through its hide. For a moment it howls, and then everything falls quiet. The only noise in the chamber is the hammering of your heart and the quiet breathing of the swing girl. Then the mimite breaks out into a loud cheer, whooping and punching the air. You bow to him. Thank you, she murmurs, then tugging your arm this way. She leads you towards the light, through a gap in the pool of light into the first cavern. Escape! You wave the torch. Tell the girl to call up. She nods mutely, then balls at the top of her lungs. I'm here! Something drops down. A rope with a basket at the end. Get in together, the chief calls from above. Pull you both up. Yeah, get in with her. The rope stretch is taut and the basket doesn't move. Uh, get out and let her go first, I guess. Haul away! Spins give a great cry and begin to pull. And this time the basket slowly rises. Then she's gone. Wait, nothing. Wait. It left us to die. Wait, I just saved her from a manticore. You imagine the celebration going on above ground that... Tears and grateful reunion. No surprise if they lose track of you down here in the dark. And then, sure enough, the basket and rope tumble down. You clamber quickly in and they haul you up. Above the ground, the chief helps himself and you into the grass. Helps him help The chief himself helps you into the grass. His daughter is with him, clutching his hand. My daughter tells me you fought bravely, he says. For that I am grateful. Invite you back with us to Torah. Hell yes, I'll come back to you. With you. Oh, fuck yes, I need a... I need some rest and food and give me everything you can. A little generosity cannot hurt you. You're not. I will come. The village erupts into celebration. You are given a place to stay and recuperate from your long journey. 20 stamina! No rations. A visit to the healing priest treats your wounds and when you emerge it's to find the village before so somber and silent now full of life. Flowers are tied to every rooftop and bands of spins are playing music on long strangely shaped lyres. You find a quiet spot under a tree to watch the festivities enjoying the glasses of thick blood wine brought to you by the children. Yes! I defeated the Montecor! These animals are crazy! That night you sleep heavily and rise the next morning to continue your journey. The chief meets you before you go. My good friend, he declares, you have saved us. He presses two gifts into your hands. A pouch of ten gold pieces, a fortune for a place like this, and a key. This opens the south city gate of Kare, he tells you. I hope it is use. Oh, thank God. Can I have some food? Can I have any? Where can I get some more fucking food? You take your leave. The path winds away from Torapani, and soon you are on a downward slope away from the hills through, through steeped rice fields. As you walk, you feel the peace and emptiness of the wasteland for the first time. Enough of the villages with their petty squabbles and nasty inns. You can lose yourself in the business of Kare, and beyond that, there is nothing but true hap emptiness of the Balkans. Walk on. For a brief moment... <sighs> Up in the hills above the path, you fancy you see a figure stealing its way along by some high and secret route. A figure all in black. But when you shade your eyes against the sun, whatever was there has disappeared. In the distance rises the city, the wall of a great city. The first true stonework you have seen since the ruins of the giant city in the hills. 
from your shoulder, you feel John hop away into the air. I didn't mind the manticore, he hisses, but this place, this place I'm afraid of. Take care, you'll need it. Then he buzzes away into the sky and is gone. You're not exactly sorry to see him go, but you wonder if you'll ever see him again. Thank God I can use magic again! Yay! 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 Woo! Celebration walk! No? Okay. <laughs> Your journey through the hills is complete. Along the way, you have gained the friendship of Flacker the Assassin and have been given the key to the gates of Kari. You have collected a few magical artifacts, three giant's teeth. You are still armed with your original sword and have no rations and 11 gold pieces and a spell book. Yep. That was my adventure. Adventure continues in Sorcery 2. Save. Yes. Well, that didn't go as planned. Didn't go bad. Didn't go as bad as I'd hoped. The crown of kings has been stolen. You have been sent to get it back. From the outposts of Adeland, you cross the hills. Along the way, you spared the life of a defeated assassin, traveled with a Minimite who almost cost you your life, and fought and killed the dreaded Manicor. You faced starvation and disease. Yes, I did. I, it went very badly. To survive, you used your blade often. You acted selfishly. Yes, I did. Your spirit guide changed you as you changed becoming the camel. But now all of that seems distant memory. For you are approaching Kare. The city port of traps! Can I buy some food here? Founded on a ford of the Yabaji River, Kare was once a camp for the pirates who ambushed merchants selling food. Sailing from Lake Lumley to the sea. As the camp grew, it became a village. The village became a town, and now Kare is a magnet for ne'er do wells and thieves, ruled over by a council of villains. Let the city do its worst! It is a place of treachery and traps. You will have to be constantly on your guard as you cross. Your goal is the North Gate, the only entrance to the Ball Clans in the next stage of your journey. If your quest is to succeed, you must enter the city port of traps and make it out alive. Now I get to be all roguey and evil and shit that I've been wanting to do. I was just like, I'm just like, careful, keep an eye out, see what's going on. Now I get to like, whatever. What am I doing? All right, I'll just click. Twilight already. The great city of Kare has loomed large on the horizon all day, but has been slow to reach. The path tracing great loops back and forth through deep and narrow paths. Walk on. You have not seen a living soul except once when a dark figure raced across the hilltops overhead and then was lost from view. So you are naturally cautious when you round a bend in the path and see a beggar crouched against a rock, muttering to himself. You stop out of sight behind an outcrop. The beggar does not look like much of a threat. Watch. You wait in silence. The beggar is clearly quite mad. He twitches from side, from one side to the other a few minutes and mutters and murders himself. They're hiding in the rocks, sir. Hiding in the rocks. He's a soldier. He's a soldier who's gone mad. You call a greeting and stride over. Who's there, he demands. What's your business? I'm a traveler. I'm on a quest. Get out of my way. Greetings. Enough of your greetings. I asked a question. Who are you and where are you headed? I'm on a quest. The man prods harder with a stick. A quest? A quest for what? I can't tell you that. The stick wavers in his hand but does not lower it. I asked you a question! Answer me or you'll face the consequences! Who are you? The man beams with an aging prod. I am the city guard. Told you he was a soldier! No one enters Kari except through me. And then, despite his age and clear health, he comes at you waving a stick. Hey, man, I don't need to fight you. <laughs> he waves a stick close to your face, jabbing a few times, but you push the point aside with one hand. All right, then, he declares. We'll settle this fairly. He tosses the stick to one side and raises his fist. Knuckles are blackened with scabs. You know what? Let's, let's, let's fight him. He's... Sure, we'll punch fight him. Fist fight. He can't beat a 5-4. Bash. Pom. Beggar lifts his 
Fist and defense, you land the minimum amount of damage for a strong attack. All right, I don't know how to fight. Oh, this is a fighting tutorial. Got it. Here we go, no stamina. You roll your sleeves back down. All right, he murmurs into the ground weakly, waving a hand. You can pass. City guard. And you get yourself friendly with the city guards. <laughs> with everybody. And you get to stab them in the back when they're not looking. Holding out a hand, you help him upright. He sits up and dusts this tattered clothing, gray cloak that was once a uniform. He is shivering. The evening is drying in, and, you must get, and it must get cold out here. You don't have any food on you, he asks, sadly. No. I'm sorry. The man shakes his head. No matter. There's plenty of meat and, and grass full if you know how to nibble. Ah. Uh, good luck. And to you, you thank him and take your leave. The path winds through gorse and thick grass. Kare squats in a basin in the hills like a stagnant, festering pool. You turn one corner, then another. Then the stone walls of the city are looming over you. The end of the pass. Before the entrance is a wide, open area that will take a few minutes to cross. You could scramble up the slope to the right to get a better view of the wall. Of course, always get a view of your surroundings. Scramble up the slope for a better view. It is formed of staggering man-sized stone blocks held together with gallons and gallons of mud and loam dredged from the base of the river. It curves away in both directions, unbroken except for the gate. Then you see something that stops you in your tracks. There is a guard posted at the battlement above the gate watching the clearing. Watch the archer. You keep watching. The guard above the gate looks this way and that but doesn't shift from his position. Down into the pass. There's nothing else for it. You put up a hand and call out. The archer lifts a hand to shield his eyes. Who goes there? Friend or foe? Uh, neither. The guard seems to consider your answer for a moment, then cocks an arrow and lets it fly. Thankfully, you're far enough that it falls well short. Wait. You wait, but the guard does not move. He cocks another arrow. Um, I can cast spells again. Do I have the spell? Can I use the spell that makes him drop his stuff? Oh, it's a three stamina. It's a three stamina. I could try another Dawes. If I have it. Or I could try one of the shields. I could try Dawes. See if I have a Dawes. B O Z. Dawes, you cast the spell on the guard who is just within reach of your magic. You see him slow down, almost as though it were in dream. Pulls the arrow back, but it seems to take him forever to find the strength. While he fumbles, you stride across the scrubland. One final fi arrow finally flies, but it too moves slowly through the air, and you sidestep it easily. Another you snatch from the sky and snap. Then you are across and in the cover close to the wall. From overhead, the guard is cursing loudly. If the spell holds, you will have a few minutes, perhaps, before he comes down from the battlement and warns his fellows. At the gate! The south gate stands before you. It is tall as two men and would be broad enough to ride three horses through if only it were open. But instead it is locked and there is no other way into the city. Luckily, of course, you have a key. I have the key. You quickly remove the key from your pack and slip it into the lock. The tumblers click as the key turns. Wait. No, fuck that. Go inside. You ease open the door, peering cautiously inside. There is no one about. You slip through the gate and it slams shut behind you. The key's still in the lock. Whoever the next ruffian to visit Ka Kari may be, he will be grateful for your little gift. You pause just inside the shadow of the gate. There are no guards about, at least none that you can see. But the guard from the battlements will have told someone that he saw you, so it is only a matter of time. To your left is a low stone building with metal bars for windows. Stone building with bars for windows. That sounds like a fucking jail. You hurry over to the wall of the building, crouch down a heartbeat before two soldiers come around the corner. The building means you're covered, but if they spot you, you'll have nowhere to run. Perhaps using magic might give you an advantage. Wait. You watch the soldiers stride up to the gate. The guards slice open a small panel set into the door and look through for a moment. They snap it shut, then march away. You straighten up and hear a noise through the barred window of the stone building. A sneeze? Stand out tiptoes, you peer between the bars. Not a storehouse, then. No, duh, the bars. Except for a wooden bench on which an old man is sitting. 
Hey! Hey! You wave at the window, but he doesn't look up. He seems to be staring very determinedly at the bench, or perhaps he is asleep. You go over the door. The key is still in the lock. Um. Okay. Let's go free the guy from his jail, Fritz Cell. He'll be my friend, right? Yes. The small room is dark, lit only by a narrow, barred window. It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the gloom so you don't notice that the door is swung shut until you hear it locked behind you. Ah, that's okay. I can unlock it. The old man who is watching sniggers with a contemptuous glee. Hey, dude. Want to be a friend? I can get you out of here if you want to work with me. You step towards the bench. Greetings, old man. He ignores you. He is concentrating hard on something on the ground in front of him. A collection of small stones scattered as though fortune-telling. After a few moments, he gathers them up and tosses again. You notice the other hand is completely missing. Look at the stones. You peer at the stones, but he snatches them up quickly. If you want to play, then you have to bet. Play what? Why, swindle stones, of course. Tell me about this game. Stranger in town, you don't know how to play better and better. We play. We can talk while I beat you. You'll have to teach me the rules. My lucky day. It's easy. We each roll our dice in secret, but we bet on what we've rolled in total. If you call what you think the other player has bid too high, the loser gives you a die. Okay. Old man draws four dice in your palm. It sweeps them away, bench. I'll go first. Show you how it's done. So these are D10s. Game is simple. We roll and we bet what's come up. So instance, I might start and bet that between us we've rolled at least. But we don't know what's on the table, so I'm guessing. Oh, I see. At least one three. Um, didn't you hear that my last bid? That's a clue. At least. Unless I was trying to mislead you, of course. Three threes. I'm not falling for your innocence. There are three threes. The round is yours. Roll the dice again. So, what's your name? You want to just get out of here instead of just playing dice? Do you know Karhei well? I guess I get to pick the question, which I didn't pay attention to the first time. Bid three fours. Do you know Carhe well? Um, I do, and I know Carhe dice too. Only two fours. One three, the round is mine. Interesting. Just playing dice with an old man. Doomed. <laughs> it's no ordinary lock. It's wizard locked with a spell, and only the first noble knows it. Better find him then, hadn't I? You don't trust me on that. I win. I win, don't I? The old man nods, gathering up dice. I went on easy on you, of course. Rematch? Yes, rematch. I want more information. A wager this time. Two gold? You're in jail! But okay, I'll give you two gold. I mean, I don't know how you have two gold for the bet. You don't know the half of it. I spent last night in the sewers. Perhaps I can tell by the smell. <laughs> Keep getting locked up and they'll stop letting you go. <laughs> I am losing this round massive hard. Is that all? I think I got everything out of him that I could. They say the spell is four lines and four nobles know one line each. I'd try to find them. Well, for two gold, I'm gonna have to give up uh, to get the names of these 
get information on these nobles is going to cost me two uh, gold at this point. You'll have to figure that out yourself. I wasn't always such a state. I used to be a hero. Really? I was part of Glandror, the heroes group. Me, Vic, Glandror, and Blanca. We were quite the adventurers. What happened? Ancient history now. Old man pockets his dice once more and stretches back. Ah, I thought you were a bit slow. Hand over the two gold pieces. Thanks for the game. You say once more? I see I have a little to learn still. The pleasure was mine, the old man says, putting his dice. He leans back against the stone and comes quietly to himself. I found four new clues. Yep, two gold. I got four clues off of it. Anything else? I can only probably play with him. Um... Let's just see what happens if I wait. You settle down to wait. Hours pass, but no, guards do not return. Night falls, and you stretch out on the floor to rest. No doubt when the guards come in the morning, you'll be able to persuade them of your innocence. You've already eaten today, so you're quite comfortable. Soon you're feeling sleepy. Across the room, the old man is already dozing, or pretending to doze, wrapped in his rags. Can you afford sleep? What if he attacks you overnight? What if the guards come? If he attacks me overnight, I'll just hit him with my sword. You shake away your fears. If something happens, you'll wake up. But I want to rest. Your dreams, when they come, are of the wall. Like a towering monster, drenched in moss and slime, the gate is wide open, Ma. On its back is a host of guards chanting a mantra too quietly for you to hear. Meanwhile, the one-armed prisoner throws the knuckles of his missing hand onto the bench over and over, calling endlessly to himself. And it is though you can see the crown sitting in the dust on the far side of the north gate, so close yet out of reach. Come sunrise, you feel better for a night under shelter. As you awake, you hear a sound at the door. Guards! They must be satisfied that you're no threat. And they open the door and shove you and the old man out into the morning sunshine. They didn't even know <laughs> I was in here. <laughs> I just walked into the jail for a good night of sleep. <laughs> yep, how many people just, just, you know, voluntarily walk into jail? I won't miss you, the old man declares as he strides away. You watch him walk off and are reminded of your suspicions as to his honesty. Check your back. He stole money. And a giant's tooth. Oh, I'm going after him. You can double. You can bet I'm going after this fucker. The end of the yard, the road splits. Looking left, you see guards. To the right, leads to the buildings. Follow the road. Kari is built on a series of natural steps. In the past, the river flooded every autumn, drenching the land and keeping it fertile. But the, since the city was raised and the river dammed, the floods have stopped. Now the trees look thin and skeletal, and the soil underfoot is like dust. Suddenly, something erupts from the tree line overhead and rolls down the slope just in front of you. It's a body. You hang back, watching the body. A black elf, by the look of it, bumps and batters its way down the slope to land in a rough heat. Search it. You waste no time, but hurry over and search the pockets. There's no gold, but it does have a strange black mask. Take the mask. <laughs> you unstrap the black face mask and put it in your pack. There's nothing more to be here. Too late to help, after all. You continue along the path. You pass an inn closed up for daytime before reaching the crossroads. Yeah, and now I'm never going to find the man again. Oh, well. That's my, that's my, I'm a bad adventurer. You reach a junction with three roads. These are outskirts of car hay. Huts huddle like beggars on either side, leading up to the city port. Look around. Must be clear to everyone that you are a stranger in these parts. The city's inhabitants, a multitude of malevolent creatures who would kill for the laces of your boots, turn to watch you as they pass. You are a sport, a figure to be jostled and robbed, and one who will most likely fall prey to the strange, elaborate system of traps laid across car hay by the early settlers to protect themselves from one another. There are more people here than you've seen in a long time. You cast an eye across the faces to see if there are any flanker, the assassin you met in Torapani. See no sign of the old man from the prison. He is scarpered sc already. To the left, you see youngsters walking up the roads with their packs. Ahead is the center. Further in the distance, you see fields. 
to the right, you come so Oh, I'm going after the old man. He's appearing to head a little further up. The business of this place is confusing, but you will have to strike out. You need to track down city nobles. Oh. And get the spell lines for the gate that the old man told you of. Just at that moment, the cart rolls down the road from the right and careens to the corner. Take... Uh, careens around the corner to take the main track ahead. On its back are several crates. One teeters for a moment, then falls near your feet. It's lid creaking open. Look in the crate. You lean down in the mud, you pry open the crate with your fingers. Inside is a pile of smashed bottles. Thick purple liquid wells about. Perhaps four bottles intact, but you recognize the smell. It's blimberry, a potion with healing. You take two bottles and put them in your pack. I was unsure if I took all four, someone would come along and go, Where did you get four bottles from? Um, yeah, right. We're following the man. Right? That was where the man went? chasing him. You head right, following the old man who stole from you until you reach the hut. There's only the only building on the path that is standing. Either side are empty plots, once the house of the farmers who planted the fields to the north. They are now collapsed and thick with gripweed. It seems here, in the shadow of the city wall, is not a place people choose to live. By the side of the hut is a sign delicately painted chain maker. The door is just cracked ajar and from within you hear a gentle tinkling sound of metal on metal. So a creature in a chain mail dress was endlessly placing the floor. You pause for a moment and listen closely at the door, but there are no voices or footsteps, just the sound of chains. There are several places you could go next. Yeah. Chain maker. It's dark inside. The floor is sawdust and the air smells of oil, polish, and burnt metal. From the ceiling hanging like ivy are metal chains and links. Some are suitable for machinery, some for oxen, some for arms and feet. Chains shift and whisper to themselves. There seems to be no one in here. No sign of the old man, although the second door is open on the far wall of the hut. No shop owner should leave their wares unattended. You begin carefully search the room, trying not to set the chains to rattling. You start your search under the work table, but there's nothing there. You look near the left wall and come across a small box. It contained three gold pieces. Ah, thank you for the gold. A high cupboard is fixed to the right-hand wall. You find a container labeled Blimberry Juice, which you take. Searching around the door to the shop, you find a copper key. It is carefully stashed in the crack of the wall, as though secret and valuable. It's far too small to be the key to the shop door. You cross the room to search the other end, uh, moving quietly as you can. And halfway over, a chain-link net drops from the ceiling and knocks you to the ground with a tremendous clatter. You have triggered a trap. There's shuffling in the back room. Someone is coming. All right. So, I have got myself trapped. What was this one? This one. Room with no windows. Are there windows in here? I wonder if I could cast fog. Let's see if that's an option. No. So, we've got P, Y, W, H, and small f. Um, how? I think there was an H. Uh, Yob. I could try the giant's tooth. Let's go with how. What happened to my PYWH? There it is. H O H. There it is. How? You cast the spell and wait to be told how you can escape. But your guiding voice is silent. It seems there's no way out. Before you try something else, the far door opens. A shadow appears in the doorway, the old man from the prison. He recognizes you and chuckles. Ah, my friend, he declares. You escaped only to get one prison, only to get caught in another. Is the chain maker here? Oh, yes. He just, just occupied a moment, but he's coming. Very interested to see you triggered his little trap. You're a thief. He looks. Of course I'm a thief. You met me in prison. Let me get out of here. Now, why would I do that? Bribe him. I'll give you three gold pieces. 
Man nods. It's a deal. But only because I'm betting you just found those coins lying around here. Net first. Old man considers for a few moments then agrees. Leaning down to the chain, he murmurs some kind of password. A few links levitate up into the air, creating a wide enough gap for you to crawl through. You slip through the gap until you are halfway out, and that's when the old man drops the net down and holds out his hand. Here's one. The rest when I'm out. The man thinks for a moment, then pockets the coin and lifts it. You crawl out from under the net as quickly as possible and get back to your feet. The old man holds out his hand. Fuck you. You pay him with a swing of your fist, which lands with a crunch on his jaw. He howls in pain. That's for stealing from me, you declare. And this... But you never finish the sentence. The old man's cry has brought a figure from the back door of the shop. It's the chain maker. Great hulk of a sphin like those you met in the village of Torpani. The old man dashes away as the hulking creature approaches. Intruder, huh? The chain maker growls fiercely and snatches up a particularly heavy length of metal, holding it like a th with a thread. Talk my way out of this. I know how to talk my way out of this. I'm not stealing from you, but I, I called out, but you didn't hear me. I heard nothing except for my godfather's cry. I'm very quiet sometimes. He frowns. I'm not surprised seeing so small. So, you want chains? I'm looking for a chain to buy. He looks around the shop. Af at chain after unremarkable chain. The chain watcher watches you and draw points with a cloth. That one. He indicates a short length of silver. Magic chain. What does it do? Magic. How much does it cost? He sizes, thinking you up. Five gold pieces. I only have seven on me. You know what? I'm going to go screw myself over and buy it. You hand over the pieces and he's happy that three of those pieces are his anyway. You shake the chain maker's hand and take the chain. It's clearly enchanted. The ends seem to snap and bite at one another like armor of snakes. Good for taking out their knees, the chain maker explains. You head out of the shop. Yep, I'm, I am, I am a very bad adventurer. But hey, I, it was actually a magic chain, so... Win? All right, so I guess uh, that that's that's the entrance to Carne, so or whatever where I am. So uh, Carhe. So that'll be it for this one. I will see you in the next episode.